Today we're going to cover the aspects of oral perception. This includes taste, aroma, mouthfeel, trigeminal or chemesthetic effects, and thermal effects that affect the overall profiles of perception in the mouth. For many years, scientists believed there were only four basic tastes, sweet, sour, salty, and bitter. The fifth taste, umami, was added to the taste wheel in about 2000, following the discovery of taste receptors specific to L-glutamate and certain ribonucleotides for which the Japanese term of umami was associated. It was first discovered in Japan by Kaikuna Ikeda in the early 1900s, who found that glutamate was responsible for the palatability of the broth of kombu seaweed. It's described as a delicious, brothy, or meaty taste. Umami compounds have a long history of use in the food industry for their flavor-enhancing properties. This slide provides an aroma wheel comprised of 14 major categories, with examples of the types of aroma often encountered. For example, in the woody category at top right, we list a few examples such as pine and amber and the deep woody notes of patchouli. The phenolic category ranges from smoky to vanilla to medicinal, and thinking of spicy, clove, nutmeg, and black pepper are good examples. In this simplistic representation, it's not practical to categorize the many thousands of aroma chemicals often encountered. Suffice it to say that the aroma contribution is often a major factor in the pleasant or unpleasant overall oral perception. Here we present the seven major factors comprising mouthfeel. Viscosity, or perceived thickness in the mouth. Think of a gummy bear. The stringency is the drying or puckering effect associated with things like tannic acid from wood bark. Particulates, they cause a grainy, gritty, chalky effect. The oily category can be both pleasant or unpleasant, such as a high butterfat ice cream, such as haagen -Dazs or an overly greasy hamburger. Tingly is most often associated with things like carbonation, or it can be the effect of a little black pepper. Slickness, to me, is associated with the slipperiness of gelatin or just a plain slimy mouthfeel. Kokomi is the elusive feeling of mouthfulness. Think of a diet cola versus a regular cola. We'll discuss kokomi in more detail later. This slide addresses the thermal and chemesthetic or trigeminal effects that provide the feelings of hot, cold, and pain. Obviously, there are thermal temperature effects such as hot and cold, but we also perceive the chemical hotness effects of things such as chili peppers, black peppers, hot mustard, horseradish, and ginger. The coldness of menthol and related cold compounds are encountered in mint-flavored gums, confections, and mouthwashes. And at too high levels of any of these attributes, we perceive pain or just perhaps a little bit of unpleasant irritation. At this point, it's clear that oral perception is very complex. In the last slide, we talked about hot and cold chemical stimuli. It's notable that at low levels, many of these cold and hot chemical trigeminal stimulants are also salt and flavor enhancers. In addition, the recent research on kokomi flavor enhancers, which by themselves are tasteless and can enhance flavors for poultry, soups, and sweetness, and overall mouthfeel, should greatly improve future flavor systems. The process in thermoreception, whether hot or cold, is dependent on ion transport across cellular membranes. Cellular membranes consist of an oily phospholipid bilayer, which would be impermeable to ions such as calcium or potassium, except for receptor protein ion channels. The flow of ions through these gated ion channels causes rapid changes in ion concentrations, which in turn produces electrical signals that trigger our perception. In the case of thermoreceptors, these are activated when a thermal or chemical stimulus excites primary afferent sensory neurons of the dorsal or trigeminal ganglia. Thermoreceptors belong to the class of transient receptor potential or TRP channels of which seven subfamilies exist. 
This table gives examples of chemical stimuli that activate the various thermoreceptor channels. In general, cold chemicals such as menthol activate the TRPMA channel, while hot chemicals like the isothiocyanates activate the TRPA1 channel, or in the example of capsaicin, it activates the TRPV1 channel. As noted, some materials activate more than one TRP channel. In 2002, scientists at Cinemex, as part of their sweet taste and savory taste enhancer programs, identified the receptors involved in both sweet taste and umami taste. In the case of both sweet stimuli and umami stimuli, two heterodimer taste receptors are involved. In the case of sweet, the T1R2 and T1R3 dimer receptor, and in the case of umami, the T1R1 and T1R3 dimer receptor. This slide gives examples of important non-sugar sweeteners. Among these are the two early sweeteners, saccharin and cyclamate, that launched the diet soft drink industry in the 1950s. Aspartame was accidentally discovered in 1965 by a chemist at Searle when he licked his finger which had been contaminated with aspartame. It was not approved by the FDA until 1983. Acesulfame K was approved in 2001. Ribotoside A is the latest major entry. Derived from the stevia plant, it's considered natural in contrast to the others. All have some off tastes that require some masking for optimum taste applications. Monosodium glutamate was the first commercial umami compound discovered, and it's been used in foodstuffs since 1909. In 2010, worldwide production was estimated to be about 2 million tons per year. The ribonucleotides disodium guanolate and disodium inosinate are also extensively used in the food industry, but to a much lesser degree. Although these have been historically used for the umami taste, efforts to reduce or eliminate monosodium glutamate has led to the development in the last few years of a number of new proprietary compounds that are just now entering markets. Most of the hot, warming, and tingling compounds are those found in common spices, such as the peridols, capsaicin, and piperine. Spilanthol is mainly obtained from jambu or Mexican gold root and is one of the few materials that produces salivation. Considerable work has been done in recent years to develop flavoring compounds related to spilanthol. Menthol production exceeds 20 metric tons per year and is the major cooling chemical used in flavors and over-the-counter pharmaceuticals such as Vicks VapoRub, as well as in products such as toothpaste and mouthwashes. However, at high concentration, it also exhibits an undesirable hotness, limiting its use level in the now popular extra-cool mints, breath fresheners, and chewing gums. By adding some of these other materials shown here in conjunction with menthol, improved cooling attributes are achieved. Several of these compounds shown are significantly cooler than menthol, especially Jividon's Evercool G180, as well as the Wilkinson Sword compounds WS5 and WS3. Only recently have the two Kokomi compounds shown here become available for use. Although glutathione has been known for a number of years to produce the Kokomi effect and impart a heartiness and mouthfulness effect, it was only approved by the Food and Drug Administration in 2010. But as a natural constituent in yeast extracts, it undoubtedly has been present in certain foods for many years, as the Kokomi effect often appears in traditional Japanese cuisine. Gamma glutamyl valyl glycine was approved as a grass flavor constituent in early 2011 by the Flavor Extract Manufacturers Association. The Kokomi effect of this material is 12.8 times stronger than that of glutathione. What is Kokomi? It's a flavor enhancing effect that is imparted by calcium sensor receptor agonists, especially gamma L glutamyl di and tripeptides. 
While this slide presents the work of scientists at Ajinomoto, it should be noted that Thomas Hoffman in Germany has also been working on the development of such new cocomine compounds. Finally, we need to address one last question. So, is cocomine the sixth taste, or does it only qualify for falling under the mouthfeel category? Certainly, the cocomine attributes are that it acts as a flavor enhancer, a taste modifier, and it also affects mouthfeel. Thus, it seems to meet the standard for both being a taste and for being part of the mouthfeel. But without official acceptance by the scientific community, we are reluctant to state that it is the sixth taste. So, for the time being, we have placed it in the mouthfeel category, but that may possibly change in the future.